We're now joined by Punjab's finance minister as the state has just announced that they are extending the lockdown for another two weeks. Remember, Punjab was one of those states which had their lockdown much before the national lockdown. So, Manpreet Bado joining me. Thanks very much, sir, for speaking with the Hindustan Times. Can you please explain, um, because we just heard the announcement, we also heard how you're going to have a daily relief of four hours or five hours that people can go in and do their shopping or anything else they need. But otherwise, your lockdown is going to continue well into May for two more weeks. Tell us about it. Well, Sunitra, uh, first of all, uh, not many people are aware, but Punjab has a very large population, uh, immigrant population, people who have emigrated out of Punjab. And most of them are actually uh, settled in uh, what is called the first world, but currently the hotspot for uh, coronavirus, which is uh, America and Canada and England. So we were well aware of uh, the situation and we had anything between 70 to 90,000 of uh, our NRIs visiting the families. So we were aware that uh, Punjab could actually be the trouble spot or, you know, uh, so we went in for a lockdown uh, a little before the rest of the country. And today the chief minister has decided to extend the lockdown uh, even further. But at the same time, uh, we are well aware that, uh, you know, somehow uh, economic activity has to start. And for that, uh, we've allowed construction to go ahead in rural areas. Uh, construction in urban areas, in case uh, which is ongoing, and in case they have uh, the labor, that can also start. Uh, Punjab is also home to one of the largest uh, MSME sectors. We've also allowed uh, industrial uh, activity to start uh, as long as they can ensure the transportation of labor or if the labor can be actually housed within the premises. We are well, well into our harvesting season uh, of wheat. And luckily for us, uh, uh, harvesting wheat is 99% mechanical. Uh, so that is not the problem. Uh, and that, and we have actually fine-tuned this whole uh, harvesting and procurement into a fine art. Uh, Sunitra, have you ever played chess? I'm, I'm not a chess player, no, Mr. Vadal. Okay, there are 32 pieces in a chess game, but there are a billion moves which you can which you can play in a chess game as long as you know how to play chess. Uh, culturally and historically. Punjab has been through a very turbulent history, you know, whether it was 84, whether it was the three wars with Pakistan, whether it was the partition of India, whether there's every invader who came, from, starting from the Greeks, to the Huns, to the Tatars, to the Mughals, Afghans, uh, British, everybody. So we have been through very, very turbulent times and we know how to handle these crises. Uh, so as I said, there are a billion moves. You're going to try each one of them, and hopefully something will work and we will be able to uh, come out winners with this. Well, you know, I think perhaps the good news for you is that if you look at the states that are doing very badly, Punjab hasn't been, hasn't featured on that list. However, as you're saying now, the migrants issue, and at the moment we're seeing all states moving. Uh, Uttar Pradesh has already, uh, I think they're making the operation to get one million of their migrants back. Other states, Odisha, are doing the same as well. Um, how, how is that working out? Do you have migrants in other states or what are you doing with the migrants who are maybe stuck in Punjab and need to go back? What is going to happen with them? Punjab has had this uh, a culture of, uh, you know, this langar and feeding people and all. So that is not the problem. Um, also, most of the migrant labor is seasonal you know they they come for a, what is known as a paddy transplant season so we have a plan b ready now that in case we cannot get migrant labor so before punjab was forced to become a rice growing state we were a very major state in growing cotton so we're trying to shift a lot of area from rice into cotton uh, what i'm really worried about and what is which forced the chief minister's hand was to, you know, since we are home to a large MSME sector, uh, that somehow uh, that activity must begin. Uh, and that has begun. So hopefully in the next uh, two to three weeks, uh, 
as things go by, uh, we will actually try and uh, uh, make uh, you know uh, turn this into a virtue out of a necessity. And the international, you know, because Punjab has many people of uh, Indian origin who live outside, who may be stranded outside. Is that something which all of you are very concerned about? Our immediate concern was the pilgrims, which were who were stranded at Nanded Sahib in Maharashtra. Some of them coming are actually testing positive, so that is the concern. And as soon as and we have sent our government uh, buses to actually fetch them, uh, they're being quarantined and uh, so on and so forth. Our immediate concern is also students from Punjab who are stuck in Kota and some other universities or places all over India. Punjab so far has had 330 positive cases. And as I said, uh, it started with uh, the NRIs. Uh, were it not for them, uh, you know, I'm not blaming them, uh, but uh, we could have been in a much better position. You have now extended the lockdown for two more weeks. People are running out of patience. They haven't, uh, we're looking at lots of job losses. We're looking at recession. Have you factored in the fact that many people in Punjab are going to be upset with the fact that they can't go to work? Since Punjab is a agri powerhouse, uh, agricultural operations are going uh, unimpeded. We have allowed industry and construction uh, sectors to start. Uh, that leaves very little uh, you know, workforce which is uh, not indulging in some kind of a meaningful activity. Obviously, the challenges are there. One, of course, the first challenge is trying to keep people at home and keeping them away from depression. Second, of course, is trying to get them uh, money and food into their houses. Third is trying to move the wheels of the economy, which have been totally jammed. And fourth is uh, get some kind of a solution in the field of science and medicine so that this can be permanently done away with. Crisis like this, which brings out the character of uh, nations and individuals. And believe you me, in Punjab, there is so much josh, you know, that you know people are actually, you know, and we've, every generation has gone through some suffering or the other. So we are not the first and we won't be the last. And uh, God willing, we will come out trumps. And also, uh, Sunetra, it also gives us, uh, you know, these crises also bring some opportunities to Punjab. Uh, like uh, where Punjab farmers, uh, now that there's no migrant labor, they'll have to start working in their fields for a change. Uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, the entire the entire drug trade because of the curfew that supply chain has been broken so about 80 90000 people have come out from their homes are actually registered at government clinics where they get an alternative kind of step down drugs it's also given us an opportunity because we were sitting on 2 lakh metric tons of uh, food grains and since government of india has announced that every individual get every individual household will get five kilos of uh, food grains free. So these food grains have started uh, being evacuated out of Punjab. A, a, a large amount, almost 25,000 crores of rupees is going to be infused in uh, Punjab's economy where farmers will get the payment. Hopefully, uh, we should be able to survive this. If uh, the Prime Minister announces nationally to lift the lockdown from the 3rd of May, uh, will that change your position? Sunetra, I don't think so. He he would or he should. Uh, you know, there is no one solution which fits all. Uh, I wear a different size kurta. You wear a different size kurta. How can, you know, this uh, prime minister's proposal fit Punjab? We are dealing with a different set of problems. I'm sure Keral would be having a different set and Bengal something different. Uh, so let each give every state the autonomy uh, or, you know, the choice to decide how it wants to deal with it. So uh, I'm, I'm actually reminded of a, a, a beautiful quote of uh, Winston Churchill, where he says, uh, this is not the end. This is not even the beginning of the end, but perhaps it is the end of the beginning. So, you know, it is the end of the beginning. We are, you know, we have about nine innings to play. We, we're down two. So we're getting into the third innings now. Well, that, that's a really lovely analogy uh, and perhaps a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much, Manpreet Padal. And good luck uh, with the fight against COVID-19. Thank you very much for having me on your program.